Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross from PTCG Radio, and I'm back with a very special video today. This is a video that was recorded at the Wakefield Winner Box a couple of months ago. Now, this was a pre-rotation game, but I've got three games from this tournament to bring you. Interesting games, good players, interesting decks. So, although they are ever so slightly out of date with the rotation, if I didn't think they were worth watching, quite frankly, I wouldn't be bringing them to you. Now, in this game, on the left... We have uh, Paul Stringer playing Verizian Genesect, and on the right we have Lu Lai Chi playing a very unusual deck. And he has started there with, I believe, that is a Reshiram, although it's hard to see whether it's Reshiram or Zekrom due to the goldness of it. They were the kind of the really secret, the chase cards in... Um, I want to say Legendary Treasures. I could be wrong about that. I think they were Legendary Treasures. And he's gone and got himself a Diglett from Plasma Blast, uh, which basically shows him to be running some kind of counter deck. So he appears to have put a rainbow energy onto that Reshiram, meaning it's already got 10 damage on it. And I believe this deck works along the lines of get a bunch of damage onto Reshiram and Zekrom, maybe Kyurem as well, and then hit for weakness. So what Lou is going to be trying to do here is get enough damage onto his Reshiram that he can be one-hit KOing the Verizian or the Genesect quite nice and early in this game for some nice quick wins. Now I am commentating on this game after the fact, and I have heard a very brief report from this game, but I haven't actually watched the game yet, so I am effectively commentating live on this game. So, just in case anyone was wondering whether I could do it, I suppose this is the test. So, Paul's basically got a... At this stage, he's kind of got a hope. When you look at a, a deck like Verizian Genesect, the whole point of it is that in turn 1 and 2... It's all about getting the Emerald Slash off. Turn 1, you get a Verizian down with a Grass Energy, um, preferably in the active, or at least with something like a Verbank City Gym down. Turn 2, you get a second energy onto the Grass... Um, second Grass Energy onto Verizian, and if you haven't done so already, you get Verizian into the active spot. You then Emerald Slash for 50 damage, 70 with a Muscle Band, putting two Grass Energy onto a Bench Genesect, so that the next turn you attach a third energy to Genesect, and then you're off. Now you'll see straight away there, Lou gets a Frozen City down, he gets a Muscle Band onto his Reshiram, uh, sorry, a Silver Bangle, and he evolves to Doug Trio, which is an excellent turn for him. Now the thing about Frozen City is, for anyone that's forgotten, it forces you to put two damage counters onto any non-Team Plasma Pokémon, when you attach an energy to said non-Team Plasma Pokémon. And most of the time, this would be a detriment. But of course, that's not what Lou is going for here. He wants damage on his Reshiram. Now, by putting the um, Rainbow Energy on there, he actually is able to get 40 damage onto Reshiram straight away. Now, Reshiram does... An extra 20 damage due to Outrage, which is 60. Add the Silver Bangle is 90 times 2. He was doing 180 damage. And he wasn't going to get knocked out next turn, Paul. Unless he played, unless he got the Verizian going with a Muscle Band, Verbank Lead, blah, blah, blah. He wasn't actually going to get the KO. So Lou gets game 1 very quickly there. He got a turn 2 out Reshiram, outraging for 180 which is, quite frankly, quite ridiculous. And there's nothing Paul could have done there. He could have tried Dragon out for another turn or two, made Paul take his prizes. I'm oh, sorry, made Lou take his prizes. But the fact of the matter is that Lou was going to win that game. He was already there. He had time. He was already going to be two prizes up. He had time to build up um, his side of the board. And he could have played, um, you know, Paul could have played some ends, etc., try and bring down Lou's hand. But the biggest problem wasn't the size of Lou's hand in that game there. The biggest problem was that he had a Reshiram active, hitting all of Paul's Pokemon for 180, and Paul had nothing down on the field which was going to be able to KO the Reshiram. Now, best case scenario, maybe he pulls some really weird tricks out of his deck and ends up, you know, two hit KOing the Reshiram over the next two turns, by which case Lou is down to his final two prizes and he may well have something built up anyway. Now, if I remember correctly, these rounds are 
they're either 45 or 50 minutes, they are best of three. I want to say 50 minute best of three. I believe they were 50 minutes. So when you're talking a 50 minute best of three, if you lose game one, and Frizzy and Genesect, it's not a slow deck per se. It can pull off some quick wins, but it's certainly not a quick deck. It, you know, you're not doing anything till turn two, and you're not really taking lots of big prizes till turn three after, in theory, the turn two Emerald Slash. So it's really turn three with Genesect. You're taking a lot of prizes there. So what Paul doesn't want to do is end up in a situation where the first game takes 10 minutes and then he's got essentially 20 minutes per game to try and win the next two. He's lost essentially after two minutes, so he might as well scoop after two minutes, give up the game, acknowledge the fact that he's not going to win, and although, and you've already seen how the decks vaguely work, you know that Paul is an underdog here, the best bet for him is to just call it a day and go into game two. Now he does get to go first here, he gets a Verizian with the Muscle Band, and it's active, and he gets an Ultra Ball, presumably here he's going to be going for a Genesect, that's the whole point of his deck. Now you'll see there he's got a Pikachu on the bench, he's going to hopefully get that up to a Raichu, and Raichu's got an attack called Circle Circuit, which for a double colourless energy, does 20 damage times the number of bench Pokemon you have in play. In theory, Pikachu, oh sorry, Raichu, with a full bench and a muscle band, does 120. Now that's far from ideal, because Reshram's got 130 HP. But as we've seen from Lou's deck, he's running Frozen City, and he's running Rainbow Energy. So the chances are, Lou's going to have to play very, very carefully to avoid getting any damage on that Reshiram. So, although it's far from an ideal situation, it's quite nice in that that Reshiram, well, sorry, Reshiram, the Raichu is likely to be able to get a one-hit KO on a Reshiram, which is going to be the big thing in this game. Now, Lou here doesn't seem to have much. He gets his Frozen City down, which means that Raichu, assuming that Paul can fill his bench and get a muscle band there, is going to do some work on any Rush Ram that comes into play. And that could be what Paul needs to go ahead here. Now, it's still going to be difficult because Raichu has a paltry 90 HP. It's certainly not going to be difficult for anything in um, Lou's deck to kill the Raichu. And you see there he plays Doug Trio, which for a single fighting energy will very easily take down the um, Raichu. Now, I cannot see exactly what Lou's bench there. It's either a Reshiram or a Zekrom, but let's face it, he's playing against an all-grass deck. Let's go ahead and assume it's almost certainly a Reshiram. Now, Paul did have a very good turn. He did exactly what you want, and he gets a switch there, which is a very good play. Paul looks like he's going to be able to Emerald Slash for 17 next turn, which is a very, very good play indeed. Now, you'll see there... And he's got two Genesect on the bench. In any other matchup, that would be an amazing start. But you see that Lou played a switch. He's popped his Reshiram active. Now, it's got 30 HP taken away. Paul needs the KO with Raichu here. He needs to get a Raichu. He needs to get a DCE. And he needs to get either a full bench or four bench Pokemon and a muscle band. Now, that's a lot to ask. But if he isn't able to do that, then what's going to happen is, he's going to Emerald Slash for 70 into the Reshiram. Reshiram is going to have 100 damage on it, which means he's going to be outraging for 240. The one saving grace is that Lou will not be able to attach a Rainbow Energy, because Reshiram will only have 30 HP left, and attaching a Rainbow Energy would do 30 damage and... KO the Reshiram. Even if the Reshiram isn't quite KO'd, Paul can maybe play some kind of Lissandra or Escape Rope tricks, try and put that Reshiram to the bench, and then actually Megalo Cannon with a Genesect, knocking out the Reshiram with the 20 HP that Genesect does to the bench from his Megalo Cannon attack. And you'll see from all the kind of weird detail I'm going into here that Paul's got to try and pull off some funny plays here. He's not just going to be able to attack straight into the Reshiram for more than one turn. But he can attack into the Reshiram here, forcing Lou to have a non-Rainbow Energy to get the return KO. But then, which he almost certainly does, let's face it, he's not going to be playing just four energy. He's going to have some fighting energy. But what this means now 
is that Lou's basically going to get the KO. It, and then he's going to go down to two prizes. Fair enough. He's going to go. He's going to take two prizes. But then, if Paul can play a Lissandra or an escape rope, he can pull up the Doug Trio, and then Megalo Cannon. Interestingly, it will actually hit Doug Trio for weakness, but Doug Trio's only got 90 HP, so it's kind of irrelevant. But then Paul will also take two prizes, and he will have taken away all the energy from Lou's board, making it much more difficult for him to then get the KO on Genesect. So in this game, although he's had, although Paul's had to attack directly into the Reshiram, that was still the correct play, if he couldn't get the Raichu up. Obviously getting the Raichu up would be the better play, kill the Reshiram in the manner which I previously said, and then just do the Emerald Slash the following turn. Now <laughs> that's a far from ideal situation, um, and he couldn't pull it off anyway. So, he gets the fighting energy, and here he takes two prizes. And Paul really needs something to get that Reshiram out of the active, to even up the prizes. If he can kill the Doug Trio with a Lissandra, then that's going to be even better, because then Lou will be left with just a single Diglett and no energy on the board. And that's going to be key. Remember, of course, that because he's playing a Verizian Genesec deck, he's going to be playing Plasma Energy. So although I've been saying Lissandra, and I've been saying Escape Rope, if he's got a Plasma Energy in hand, or if he, we know we've got Juniper in hand, if he can play the Juniper and draw into the Plasma Energy, as he's doing here, he can pull up the Doug Trio and get the KO that way. Now, we didn't get an exact look at what he discarded there, but, and has he actually got it? It doesn't look like he has. Looks like, And that's that's a shame. Now, you see Paul actually discarded a lot of stuff with his Juniper there. And that's not ideal. You don't want to go through that stuff. But as we saw by the very, very quick Game 1, Paul, he's playing against a deck which is specifically designed to counter, amongst other decks, Verizian Genesect. Now, I believe this is round 4, so I believe they're 3-0 and o each here. And although you might expect the Verizian Genesect to be 3-0, and o, that means Lou is 3-0 and o with his silly deck. So it's not that silly. It's getting wins. I believe this is round four. I could be wrong about that. I'm sure if I am wrong, somebody from the Wakefield um, area will correct me in the comments below. And please do, because I'm assuming the Wakefield people want to watch this. Because it happened in Wakefield, and, you know, Wakefield's fun. I should be going there many times this season. So, he did play the Juniper, he did get rid of a lot of stuff, and he did whiff the Plasma Energy, which is a shame, because I don't believe he's actually played any Plasma Energy yet. I could be wrong about that. And I believe in an earlier hand we did see that he plays Plasma Energy, and let's face it, if you're playing Genesect, why wouldn't you? Now, the bonus here is that Lou's now basically got to charge up a new Reshiram. That's the downside of his, fi of his plan. So all he really did there was he got his Doug Trio in the active, he got another Doug Trio, we assume a Reshiram on the bench, and then he managed to get an Earthquake off. He did 60 damage to the Genesect, now it would have been far better if he'd managed to get a Muscle Band, but he managed to do 10 damage to the bench Reshiram. Now if he could pull a Double Colourless Energy next turn, that would put the Reshiram up to 30 HP, uh, up to 30 damage, I should say, which means that he would be doing 60. If he managed to get, say, a Silver Bangle, that would actually put him up to 120, and that would be enough to get the KO on Genesect if he can pull a Silver Bangle, which we know he plays, and a Double Colourless, which we haven't seen yet, I don't believe, but we can assume he plays, because you need to be able to attack in one turn with Reshiram. So, the Frozen City would put it up to 30... And actually, I believe a Muscle Band would also do that, because they'd be hitting for 140. I forgot about the extra 20 that Outrage does. So the fact of the matter is, if Lou can pull a DCE next turn, he's going to be in a pretty good situation. Now, if he only pulls a Double Colourless, he's going to be on 30 damage, which means he's only going to be doing 100 with Outrage, which won't get the KO. What that means is that when Paul Megalocannon's this turn, he should definitely not 
put the 20 damage onto Reshiram. If he does, that leaves Reshiram able to have 50 damage on it next turn, if Lou attaches a DCE, which means he'll be doing 140, and he will get the KO onto that Genesect. Now, Paul is playing um, an energy switch here, and then manually retreating the Verizian. Oh, sorry, manually retreat and then playing the energy switch. And this makes absolute perfect sense. This is a very good play by him here. Because, as we've said, the Dug Trio is weak to grass. That means that even without a muscle band, Verizian's doing 100 damage. Paul gets a prize. And, as I've said, that Reshiram may well be getting a KO this turn. But that's not the end of the world. That Reshiram's got some damage on it. And I'm assuming Lou doesn't play any other stadiums. So, stadia, I should say. So, if he puts any energy on that Reshiram, it's going to have more damage on it. What that means for Paul is that the Reshiram, as I've outlined, it has a decent chance of coming into the active and KOing that Verizian. But then Paul is going to be able to use that Genesect, or indeed a Raichu, if he can fill his bench and get a muscle band here, or indeed just get a muscle band or any bench Pokemon, and he's got a muscle band on the Pikachu already. So actually, Paul is going to be using Raichu for 100 next turn if he just pulls the Raichu, because he will have four benched Pokemon and a muscle band, which will be enough to do 100 damage, and that Reshiram's going to have, assuming he attaches energy to it, it's going to have 30 damage on it. If he doesn't attach energy to it, we can assume he's going to be attacking with the Dug Trio. So, by the time that Reshiram comes active, it's going to have more than that damage on. What that means is, Paul has put himself in a very good position here to actually be able to do some damage to get rid of that second Dug Trio and then have an answer to the Reshiram when it comes up. So he's really put himself in the driving seat here. He hasn't gone overly aggressive. You'll notice that when Paul Emerald slashed, he actually put the energy onto Pikachu because he doesn't... I don't know if he plays double colourless energy, but he doesn't want to be in a situation where he has to draw into it. So that was a very good move by Paul there. He slowed the game down a little bit because Lou contrary to what we saw in the first game, he's not playing the fastest deck ever. So he slowed the deck down, he's presenting his Verizian, almost with the kind of, almost like a challenge to Lou of, I don't think you're going to be able to kill my Verizian, and even if you do kill my Verizian with your Reshiram, I've got an answer with my Raichu. And Lou kind of noticed that, because you'll see from the Juniper he played a moment ago, he actually discarded a double colourless energy, which means he's clearly going for the Doug Trio play, not the Reshiram. What he's likely to be looking to do here is kind of turn what Paul's done back on himself. Put himself in a position whereby he KOs the Verizian, then the Raichu comes up and KOs whatever killed the Verizian, be it a Reshiram or whatever, but then he's got a Dug Trio for the Revenge KO. Although, had Lou gone for the Reshiram KO on the Verizian, then he would have had a Dug Trio ready to kill the... Raichu. And then Paul would have needed there an energy and a Colrus machine. No, he wouldn't. He would have had two turns to get energy onto that Genesect to then kill the Doug Trio. Instead, he's just retreating here and basically saying to Paul, I don't think you're going to be able to get the KO. But that's not the smartest plan in the world here. Paul has a full bench and he has a muscle band on the Pikachu. So a Raichu here would be hitting for 120, and it would get the KO on that Reshiram, leaving Paul with just a Grass Weak Dug Trio. So in a game like this, I suppose what we're saying is that you've got one deck, and Paul's playing a very straightforward metagame deck. Everybody knows it, everybody does what it, everybody knows what it does, it does what it does. Lou here is playing a counter deck. He's got a bunch of weird stuff, which is specifically to designed to counter the most often played decks. And it's a little bit of a kind of cat and mouse game of chess, if you will. If Paul runs in headstrong, doing exactly what Frisian Genesect does, he's probably going to lose, because that's what Lou is prepared for. So instead, what he's doing is he's trying to put Lou in a position where he's got to answer for anything Lou does, and Lou's trying to do the same. 
But you see there, he finally did draw into the plasma energy. He used red signal to pick up the Doug Trio, and he got a um, an emerald slash off to get energy. And you'll see that that Genesect has a G booster already attached. Now it doesn't actually need a G booster. All it actually needs is a a muscle band. So even if Lou is able to get rid of um, that G booster, he's still going to run into problems because Paul only needs a muscle band to get the KO here. And that's actually a lie, sorry, I'm talking rubbish. He doesn't even need a muscle band. A Megalo Cannon normally will get it. Which is why Lou has benched a Mewtwo. Because Mewtwo is going to do more damage. The X-Ball does um, 20 damage times the combined number of energy attached to both of the active Pokemon. And if Paul doesn't use G-Booster to discard energy, Mewtwo's then going to do a lot more. But to be honest, this game is very, very quickly going into Paul's favour. There wasn't a KO there from the Reshiram. Reshiram wasn't able to get a KO. That gives Paul one more turn to be able to get the Raichu. Now, we would have to discard an energy, and it looks like he is going for the Raichu. There we go. He is going to have to discard an energy attached to Virizion to retreat, because it doesn't look like he's got a Sky Arrow Bridge, but that's kind of irrelevant at this stage. He's got the KO on the Reshiram with Raichu, and then, of course, he's got the Genesect on the bench with G-Booster already attached which he's going to be able to use to kill the Mewtwo, and I believe Paul's got three prizes left, although I haven't been specifically keeping count. So, I mean, you could say that Lou hasn't drawn particularly well this game, although he's had supporters and stuff, so I don't think he's drawn horrifically, but Paul has played this game particularly well, in that he's basically, he, he set himself up for anything that Lou is able to do. Now, Lou has put a Cub Chew active, which presumably is going to evolve into Bear Tick. Now, this was pre-Furious Fists, so it's not going to be the Furious Fist Bear Tick that does 20 damage times the... Um, sorry, plus 20 for each of the retreat cost of the defending Pokemon. Uh, and honestly, off the top of my head, I can't remember which one it is, but it's kind of irrelevant here. Bear Tick isn't made for this matchup. Bear Tick is made for, essentially, Pyro. It's it, it's going to be in there as a Pyro counter. And Paul, I think it's safe to assume, he's not going to be playing any Pyro in this game. Now, previously, in the previous game, I told you how Paul played it very well by scooping very, very early. Far more early, in fact, far earlier, than he actually needed to. But he did so to bide himself time. Lou, on the other hand, is under no such constraints. After such a very, very short game one, the likelihood is that there's going to be a decent chance that they're going to be able to finish two games. Um, so Lou doesn't need to scoop to go to game two. So to game three, sorry. I mean, it, it looks like he can't win, but Lou plays a bunch of weird stuff, and actually, as I'm saying this, he does turn around and scoop. Lou had the chance of just kind of hanging on, seeing if he could maybe end him, and kind of pull out a win that way, because he knew he had plenty of time. We're only, as you can see from the bar at the bottom, we're only 24 minutes into the game, so he's going to have, you know, a, a good 25 minutes for game three. And he gets to go first. Now, he did scoop when he knew he basically couldn't win. And essentially, he had to get rid of the bench Genesect with the G-Booster. Having that on the bench was basically Paul's way of saying, deal with me. Because if you don't deal with me, I've got something on the bench which can kill whatever you bring up. I'm going to kill your Cub Chew with my Raichu, or I believe I can kill it with my um, Verizian. And I'm going to leave this Genesect on the bench. It's got free energy attached. It's got a G-Booster attached. And I'm in no hurry to bring this active. Now, maybe you're going to play Lissandra and kill it. Well, I'm still ahead on prizes. 
and I've still got a bunch of energy around the board, and I'm going to be playing Shadow Triad to recycle that G-Booster. So I can play energy and energy switch and all of that. I might be able to get a second one going. Or I can play a Verizian and, you know, etc, etc. But if you don't deal with it, I've got a guaranteed way to knock out anything of yours that I need to. But going into game three, Lou has got to be the favourite. Paul has clearly built a very consistent deck. That's how he's ended up at 3-3 going into this game. And we've seen that even in game one, the deck was doing what it was supposed to be doing. Lou was just too fast for him. When he went first, he got the turn two Emerald Slash, and he played the game very well. He played quite conservatively, and he set himself up to counter anything Lou would do. Oh, and Lou started with a rush around there, which is the best starter he can hope for. Um, again, we're assuming it's a rush around. I suppose it could be a Zekrom. But, you know, at this stage, when we're playing here, you're talking Verizian Genesect. I suppose he would be playing Zekrom, though, for the Evil Tower matchup. So maybe it is a Zekrom. But we're hoping it's a Reshiram. Um, so, you know, in, in this game, Paul's not going first. So Lou is going to have two turns before Paul can Emerald Slash. Now, we can only attack on one of them. But as we've seen, he only needs one attack. He's already got Frozen City down. That means if he attaches a Rainbow Energy, there's three damage counters on Reshiram. If he attaches a non-rainbow energy that's still two damage counters and we know he plays silver bangle and if he can be the way to beat frizzy and genesect you know every time and it's obviously difficult to do or more people would be doing it but the way to beat frizzy and genesect is just to ko the verizian before they get off an emerald slash if you can ko the verizian before they get off an emerald slash they don't they cannot get enough energy onto the field and you will win at that stage, it, it, it's pretty much a guaranteed outcome. It's an inevitability. It's going to happen. Now, Paul here isn't going to be able to get a Raichu off before Lou attacks. What he can do is leave the Pikachu active. Maybe he can try and nuzzle. Um, that's Pikachu's first attack, where you flip a coin. If heads, it's paralysed. Maybe he can try and nuzzle to paralyse the Reshiram. The problem is, if he fails the paralysis, or Lou gets out of the paralysis, he's going to be able to attach an energy, outrage the Pikachu, and then Paul's got no energy on the field. And Paul is not going to win this game with Raichu alone. As we saw in the previous game, Raichu is very handy in that he's going to be KOing the Reshiram. And although, technically, well, I suppose in reality, Raichu does max out at 120 damage, the reality of the situation is that Lou is not going to be playing with a Reshiram that's got full HP. Which means Paul is going to be able to pretty much always one-hit KO the Reshiram as soon as it comes active. And that is a big plus for Paul. That's what he's going to need to be able to do. But he's not just going to win doing that. He needs to have the Raichu to kill the Reshiram... But then he needs to have the Verizian and Genesect doing what Verizian Genesect does. He needs to Emerald Slash to kill the Doug Trios. And we've seen that Lou does play at least Mewtwo's. He needs to have Genesect there ready to G-Booster to kill the Mewtwo. And you'll see there Paul again. He Junipers a bunch of stuff. But it's a Verizian Genesect matchup. He needs to get a Verizian down. He needs to get a Genesect down. Ideally here... What he would love to be doing is, I mean, whatever he does is going to be bad for him. He needs to get a Verizian out, and ideally, he wants to energy switch the energy from the Pikachu onto the Verizian, so that he can Emerald Slash next turn. The big problem with that is, Lou, with just one energy attachment, with that Frozen City still active is going to be able to KO the Pikachu. I suppose at this stage, the, the Pikachu's dead unless he can hit heads on a nuzzle. Now, Pikachu's going to die. So the question is, does Paul go for the Verizian, basically guarantee that he's going to put himself three prizes down, or does he maybe retreat into the Verizian, dare Lou to have enough stuff to KO the Verizian, 
and then try and get the return KO with Raichu and play the game that way. Knowing, of course, that Lou is probably going to have a Doug Trio to KO the Raichu. I mean, Paul doesn't have very many good options here. I mean, Nuzzle might be the best thing to do here. Because essentially, he's either giving up the Pikachu, and we've already talked about the fact that he's going to need those Raichus, or he's kind of letting him KO one of his EXs. And that might, if Paul doesn't play DCE, and we haven't seen one yet, I believe, if Paul doesn't play DCE, then he's done the best thing here. He basically needs to be able to kill that Reshiram. Now, the big problem is... <laughs> I mean, that Reshiram, he's going to... If Paul can get a Muscle Banner, some Bench Pokemon, an Energy, and a Raichu, and that's quite a lot, he's going to be able to kill the Reshiram. Okay, fine, brilliant. But then Doug Trio comes up, to kill the Raichu. Well, that's not a problem, because Verizian kills Doug Trio. But the problem is here that Paul's not going to have two energy on that Verizian, which means he's basically got to let the Doug Trio have a go at the Verizian. Now, the Doug Trio's not going to kill the Verizian. He's going to do 80. And then the next turn, he's going to do 80, and the Verizian won't actually be dead, except that there's a Frozen City in play. So the chances are that by the time Paul's got enough energy on the Verizian, he might get off one Emerald Slash, but then Doug Trio is going to kill the Verizian. Or something else is going to kill the Verizian. Really, what Paul needs here is he needs double colourless energy. He needs to put Grass energy onto the Verizian and double colourless energy onto the Raichu. We don't know if he plays it here. Because otherwise, looking at the board state and looking at the decks, it looks like Lou is probably going to come out on top. Essentially, when you're playing the Pokemon trading card game, what you need to be doing as you're playing is trying to guess the next few turns. And if the next few turns look like they're going to go against you, you need to form an alternate plan to stop the bad thing happening. Now, if we look here, what looks like it's going to happen is that Lou is going to kill the Pikachu, assuming he can get an energy. Paul then needs a lot of cards to kill the Reshiram. Assuming it's a Reshiram and not a, a Zekrom, in which case I'm talking rubbish. Lou then brings up the Doug Trio to kill the Raichu. And then Paul doesn't have a Verizian ready to go. Which means he attaches. Lou hits his Verizian. He then gets off an Emerald Slash. And then Lou's probably going to kill his Verizian. Now at this stage, Lou is down to three prizes. And Paul has, take, uh, Paul has taken two prizes. And there's a chance then that Lou might be able to kill another one of his EXs. In the same way that we saw in Game 1. And at that point, Paul has lost two Pikachus. Now, I don't have access to either of these gentlemen's deck lists. Maybe I should have asked for that, knowing that this game was going to go on my YouTube channel. But I didn't, so that's entirely irrelevant. But I'm not thinking that Paul is going to play more than that. My apologies. It looks like there's a double colourless energy on the Reshiram. I apologise for that. It looks like there's double colourless on the Reshiram. Um, and obviously when Paul attached to the Pikachu it would have done 20 damage because of the Frozen City. Which means Reshiram's outrage for 40 was enough to kill the Pikachu. Now, Frozen City does go away, and that is huge for Paul here, because it stops Doug Trio to hit KOing the Verizian. And it looks like Paul's managed to get the two energy onto Verizian. I apologise, I must have missed an energy switch there while I was rabbiting on about stuff. And Paul's actually managed to drop an Enhanced Hammer to get rid of the DCE on the Reshiram, which is huge. Now, because he, Lou now needs to draw into a DCE, and we know you can only play so many of them, and now he's got a Genesect active. So once again, Paul is, is playing this game exceedingly well. And I know I keep talking about Paul's play rather than Lou's, but Paul really is on the back foot here. Lou is, again, playing this game fantastically well. It's a very good game with two very good competitors, and that's why it was worth popping up here. Um, 
the silver bangle does go on to, I'm assuming, a bench rest ramp. And we see a juniper there getting rid of a couple of energy because he needs a double colorless. If he gets a double colorless, we have a KO here with a possibility of a further KO with what I'm assuming is a benched Reshiram, and then he's really in the driving seat. He'll be down to one prize at that stage. The question is, what does he have? Maybe he's got a switch, and then he's going to be able to use the benched Reshiram. We hope he does, if we're cheering for Lou to win, of course. So Paul managed to get that Verizian using um, Emerald Slash. And what Lou's really done here is put Paul in a position, although it, it largely very much helped that Lou went first here, he's put Paul in a position where he, he can't afford to use the Raichus. Now, I haven't seen any... Um, oh, and Lou's had to just pass there. I haven't seen any DCE from Paul here, and that's a real shame. If he doesn't play DCE, that's put him on the back foot here. But he is going to get a KO on the active here using Emerald Slash. Oh, and it was a DCE. Oh, no, it wasn't, sorry. Um, he had a couple of energy on the bench Reshiram, but Paul's actually managed to get rid of that using his second Enhanced Hammer. Those Enhanced Hammers really coming up absolutely key. And he's managed to get a third energy onto the Genesect, but what he doesn't want to do here is start using Megalo Cannon. I don't believe he does anyway, because he's going to be able to get the KO with an Emerald Slash. I don't know if I agree with this particularly, because what Paul could have done there was get a second Emerald Slash, meaning he's got two Genesects ready to go. Now, if Lou is going to be able to get a KO here, that's going to really put Paul on the back foot. Paul would have been able to get a KO there using the Emerald Slash, getting energy onto a second Genesect, and he has got the KO here, and that is huge. Um, and they're just trying to do the maths there, but there is 40 damage on the um, Reshiram. Outrage will put that up to 60, the Silver Bangle will put that up to 90, and the Fire Weakness puts it up to 180. And now he's going to be able to get another KO on that Verizian next turn. So Paul has just um, dragged it active uh, using his red signal. But this is huge. And I think Paul has just lost the game with his previous move there. Now, Paul... Lou was going to get the KO and he was going to go ahead. But by using an Emerald Slash there, he would have been able to set up two... Genesect, and it does depend if he had two grass energy left in the deck, which we don't know if he did. But if he could have set up a, Genes a second Genesect there, then he would have got the KO, and it looks like he only had one grass left in his deck, but that still, for my money, would have been a better play. He would have needed a super roll or something to get the energy back, and he manages to retreat the Mewtwo, he's got the KO, and this is going to be the game for Lou here, which is a Big shame for Paul. Now, I don't know if Emerald Slashing there would have saved him the game. What it would have done is basically given him a couple of Genesects, and he would have needed a Super Rod to put some energy back in, and then he would have had to draw back into it. So it's far from a guaranteed win there. But what he would have been able to do, and all we need is something like a Lissandra Energy here, and there is a win, and it looks like he has got it there. But by using a, a second Emerald Slash, he would have got the KO on the Reshiram, potentially leaving himself open to having two Genesects there to basically counter the threats. He would have been able to use a Genesect Muscle Band to kill the second Reshiram that came up after the first one went down, and then he potentially would have been able to G-Booster and Mewtwo for the win. Again, I don't know if Paul would have been able to get, because he only had one energy left in his deck, according to that second Emerald Slash he did eventually, but if he could have got a Super Rod and drawn into another energy, then he would have been able to KO the Reshiram, and then he would have had two Genesects ready to go, and that might have got him the rest of his prizes. I don't know what Paul's hand was like. I don't know if he was able to get enough energy, and if he wasn't, maybe the Genesect play wouldn't have been the best. But looking at the board there, I think Paul potentially could have pulled out the win there if he'd played slightly more conservatively and gone for the second um, Verizian. But regardless... 
wonderful game, two good people. I hope you enjoyed that game. I certainly enjoyed watching it and commentating on it and seeing a very unusual deck going forward. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, etc. below. I have two more games in this tournament which I will be uploading in the near future, so look out for that. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio. Now, just a quick little side note at the end of this video before you all go crazy in the comments. After watching this back, I've noticed something which I think some of you are going to point out. Let me address that very quickly here. At about 35 and a half minutes, when I suggest Paul should have Emerald slashed a second time, the active Reshiram does seem to only have 70 HP on it, and the Vrizium without a muscle band is going to put the Reshiram at 120, not KOing it, but allowing it to KO the Vrizium. I still contend that what I said was correct because Paul would have been able to drag something else active using red signal and then he could have killed the Reshiram with the residual damage from Genesex Megalo Cannon. Not only that, but Lou would have had to draw into a DCE to get the KO anyway which was far from a guarantee, and as we saw the following turn, Lou has a Reshiram on the bench ready to get a KO on the Verizian. So it really doesn't matter that it would have been 10 HP away from the KO, because as far as I'm concerned, leaving that Reshiram with 120 damage is as good as having the KO. It means that you can red signal something off the bench, and you can actually kill that with the residual damage and he could literally have just attached a uh, plasma energy to the genesect which already had two energy attached to it um, and that would have both allowed him to megalo cannon and to red signal he then could have got the KO on something on the bench maybe the cub chew um, if he got a muscle band he actually could have killed both of the reshirams in one turn with that genesect so before you all point it out yes I am aware that the Verizian uh, Emerald Slash would not quite have killed the active Reshiram at 35 and a half minutes, but it would have created a much more favourable game state. So please, I hope you've listened to this before you post in the comments, oh, he wouldn't have KO'd the Reshiram. No, he wouldn't, but he would have been able to just red signal and with a muscle band kill both of them together, or at least get two KOs at the same time, whilst having a second Genesect on the bench pretty much ready to go for future KOs. Thank you for watching.